what we talked about today made me think about how complicated life can be. You know, like, no one will be taught everything in my life. Like, even if I got really big and famous, they'd have to pick out the main events. So what would the main events be, right? What would they pick for my stories? What would I pick for my stories? Similar to Disney, I had an experience where I would draw these horses. <laughs> I was actually learning how to draw them, and I had finally gotten to a complete horse head that I was happy with, and I drew maybe 20 of them on their little papers, and I don't know, looking back, they were dreadfully simple, and just painful. It's, it's painful, but I was really proud of them. And I can't remember if it was my mom who gave me the idea, or if I just came up with it on my own, or if she mentioned Disney and I did my research or what, but like, I, I wrote five cents on the bottom right corner of every single one, thinking that one day I was going to sell these, or I was going to get really famous when I was older, and I would sell them for way, way more than five cents. We'd laugh about how I put five cents on them, you know? My mom was my biggest supporter in all that. Much like how Disney had all those people encouraging him along the way. And I always said that I drew from the time I picked up a pencil, so there was that. I honestly never knew the connection that I had with Walt Disney. I, it's something that I probably should have picked up on. I've always loved his stories. I'm a sucker for those happy endings, you know? But just the idea that he was such a, a people person, an attentive listener. Okay, I know I'm not that good at listening, but I purposely work on it, so this, this, I count this. <laughs> He'd be putting on plays and he was always the center of attention. Yeah, all of that was me and my childhood. And, and with my two sisters, I've conducted so many plays, many of which were not memorable, but they were hilarious. And as long as I could get my family just laughing, I considered it a success. So then the question comes down to, you know, what what will people pick for their stories they'll tell about me, if they tell any stories about me? If I go into acting, they might tell the, the little play story. If I become a famous artist, they might tell the story about the little horse drawings. But chances are neither of those stories will be told because I, I don't plan on going into either one of those exclusively. They would just be stories that Maybe I would, I don't know, maybe, maybe I would tell them so many times other people would start telling them. But other than that, they would just pick stories that would pertain to what I did and what, what I'm known for, if I'm known at all. Today was actually pretty eye-opening. First of all, I have some really awesome nicknames. One of them is Mickey, spelled M-I-K-K-I. Of course, now that we're talking about Mickey Mouse, I keep thinking, you know, you're talking about me, and I have to remind myself, no, we're not. <laughs> I actually, I used to spell my name like Mickey, M-I-C-K-E-Y, right? But then one day I was hanging out with my dad, and he was coding a program, and he spelled my name because he needed different players in this little game that he's coded. He spelled my name, M-I-K-K-I, and I thought, well, that's different, <laughs> and that's cool, and I, I, I'm just gonna take that. <laughs> and of course, of course, and I digress, but this was right after I had had uh, Mickey, spelled the normal way, monogrammed onto my new messenger bag. I, you know, of course I get the really cool spelling after I set that up. The, the only other thing that struck me today was watching the Bambi sequence. Um... Man, the whole thing felt like magic back when I was little. And it tends to be, does it not? But then, of course, once you learn how something works, it ruins that magic, you know? And I, I felt like watching it would ruin the magic in, in a good way. Like, it would shed light on how they made it. But the more I saw about it, the more I went, this is still, it's still magic. Like, magnets are magic until you know that they've got opposite poles. Snow is magical until you learn how weather works. The sun rising is magical until you understand that we, on the Earth, are turning. <laughs> so I half, I half expected it to be the same. Part of me knew that I haven't seen it in forever, and so it would be like watching it for the first time again. 
But another part of me thought that, you know, seeing the multiplane camera and all the people working on it, I thought for sure this will make it less impressive. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll be less intrigued by it, but it did the exact opposite. The more I spent watching it, the more I realized I still couldn't deny how magical it was. It's just, it's, it's just magic. <laughs> it's just magic. Today, we talked about a lot. <laughs> uh, the part that stuck out, well, okay, so I took notes on this, specifically because it spoke to me, that the idea that Walt was Mickey and Mickey was Walt, and they were the same. So I've created a few characters, and there's one that I really, really like right now, uh, because I do, I do a bunch of content creation online, and I have this little mascot, and it's called a Meep, and it's, it's pink and adorable, and it's like a mouse plus a chipmunk. It's a fantastical yeah, rodent, I guess. <laughs> and in a way, the Meep is me, you know? Uh, it loves to sleep, it's adorable, and it's pink. Okay, I'm not pink, but pink is my favorite color, so it's the embodiment of me. So my question that I'm asking myself is, do we become our own characters or do we make our character us to begin with? And, and I think it's the latter. I mean, obviously it depends, but I think if we're not careful, any character that we make will be us. I think it's difficult to make a character who is not purely the good qualities of ourselves, right? We, we want to make the character speak like us, think like us, have the same likes and dislikes as us, because that's easy. The, the other thing that I wrote down was... Um, If your goal is making money, you lose focus on what could make it work. And I I don't know, I really liked it because this is something that's super near and dear to me. That like I could have picked any money making major to become a nurse or some scientist or something crazy. And that would have that would have worked out. I would have been really unhappy, but I would have, you know, would have made a lot of money. But I went into the arts because it's something that I like. The same thing goes to content creation. And so many people see the successful few and they go, well, I can do that. That's not hard, you know? And so they start making YouTube videos or start streaming on Twitch or whatever. And, and they, they quickly run out of steam because a week in, they're not millionaires, right? And they expected something else. They expected to make money off of this thing and they're not. And I don't know, that, that pains me in a way. I, I want to see people do something they like, not do something because it gets you money. But that, that kind of mentality, this get rich quick or get rich doing anything scheme, um, it's just not sustainable. I've already seen success with the things that I'm doing and I love them and I love doing them and I feel like I'm doing them for the right reason. And people see that, and especially when you're in front of a camera, people see your true intentions, right? You can't lie to a camera. And when you act all crazy or, you you know, you act like you're on the stage trying to become an emotion, you know, it's, people see that as fake because it is. So it's, it's a lot more difficult to hide something when you're in front of a camera all the time. And so the people who see me doing things when I, when I do things in front of a camera and online and it's live, there's not a whole lot to hide. And so if I were doing it for the money, they'd see. Yeah, so my, so my, my question coming out of this is, to anyone, are you there just to make money? Are you doing whatever you're doing just to get famous or get a bunch of money? Or are you doing it because you love it? Are you doing what you love? I don't know. I feel like when you do what you love, everything else clicks into place. It's not that everything else will be easier or that it'll be super clear what you're supposed to do. You just, it, it just... <laughs> risk. It's scary, but when the risk is worth the reward, it's a good one, right? <laughs> this, this, this concept, I don't know. I love it. I love talking about it because it's... 
I feel like I tend to be either on one side or the other. I'm, I'm on the extreme of the argument. Like, people will say, well, I am really cautious all the time. And I'm like, oh, I will be cautious. I will like to stay at home. I don't want to drive. I don't want to go out in the snow. I don't want to do anything. I, man, you, can't, you can't budge me out of my safe room where it's nice and, and, and quiet and safe. My safe room, you know, but on the other hand, I want to go scuba diving in Hawaii and I did. So, you know, that, that happened, <laughs> that happened. It was, it was not worth the risk or the anxiety. The coral was dead and it was, that was unfortunate. Yeah. But, but some things were worth it. Lots of my, my public speaking successes came from me just standing up and walking up there and saying what I wanted to say. Like I, I made it into some poetry slam contest into the top three of my school and then made it to the state finals simply because I decided to stand up in front of my class and, well, essentially half my school at that point and read a poem. And I didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to stand in front of a, you know, 300 people. I, that was the last thing I wanted to do. But it was a risk, the risk of embarrassment that was worth the reward, getting high distinguishment and honors and stuff. I went to England all by myself, right out of high school. I packed up stuff and flew myself to England and traveled all by myself, which is risky. It is risky as a female in this world, but I did it anyway, and I, you know, this is the girl who doesn't want to leave her room, and I decided to go to another country for six months. Uh, but that was worth everything. So the thing that I wrote and underlined in my notes was, um, it was this. Uh, not taking risks leads to a boring life. I, d I don't know, I, I sometimes live under this... I tend to be more cautious than I want to be. I'd like to think I'm more adventurous than I am. You don't need to risk everything to experience adventure. Like, you don't need to dump all of your life savings on one thing like Walt did, right? Think that's crazy. Um, and, you know, he, he did it and it worked out for him like great timing. But I don't think, I don't think that's something we should all follow. <laughs> like, that shouldn't be the model of how we should live, you know? There is some logic in being safe, especially with your money. But I know that with my life, if I didn't risk at least a little bit, it'd be so incredibly boring. I wouldn't have any friends. I would be so uncultured. <laughs> but you have to find that balance, right? You can't only stick on one side or only stick on the other. And I think the way I find the balance is that if I'm on one extreme, then I have to go to the other extreme to balance it out. And I think other people tend to be a little bit closer in on that scale. <laughs> But as long as you have a balance, I think you're fine. You'll have a, you'll have an exciting life that's also semi-safe. So the only thing that really stuck out to me about today was the IATSE thing. Because um, in my acting classes that I took last year, I had... <laughs> they encouraged us to get into a union if we were offered a contract to check with other people and make sure this is a good contract and stuff like that, but just to be in a union so you get your breaks, because as an actor, they just, they run you to the bone kind of thing. But then in history classes, all the unions seemed bad or like a cause of trouble. So I've never been able to like really figure out if they're objectively good or bad. The other thing was that we're never really exempt from war. Right, if we have war in our country, everyone's affected. And Disney may have avoided being hit by the depression really hard, but the war was too much of everywhere, you know? But it was good for instructional videos, let me tell you. I can't imagine what life would be like without the visual simulation of things to explain how they work. So, you know, it did some good. If, if we can put a silver lining on war, there it is made Disney make an instructional video on how things works and set a precedent for a bunch of new videos for from for years to come. I do have a little comic that I drew of Disney and his girlfriend who wanted him to spend that money on a um, on a canoe. 
And she's just like, canoe! And he's like, but a camera, though. It's cute. It's really cute. <laughs> That's it. I, I, like, I drew that second day of class or something. So, there you go. Enjoy. <laughs> Bambi. Some people hated it for its realism, which I don't really get. To me, that's the amazing feat of it all, is that they accomplished some of the most amazing backgrounds and movement of the characters that were still, you know, animated and kind of caricatures of animals, but also just extremely realistic. I don't know. How could you not praise that for what it was? So my mom told me that she went to go see Bambi in theaters. And so I had to go look that up because I, we, we talked about how they took the movies that they had released and re-released them. And obviously since they're a set amount of copies, they would have to release it a second time, but then those copies would move around the country. And so, um, you know, my mom was born in like the fifties, so she must have seen one of the later releases. She also mentioned that it was probably like a special military thing because their dad um, was in the army. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was... I... Okay. <laughs> so I remember watching Bambi for the first time and I think I've already talked about this. I probably have already talked about this. <laughs> It feels like I've already talked about this. That it was it was so magical. That I, I watched this drawing come to life. I don't know how they did it. And I still don't know how. I like I watch it again and I go Knowing more does nothing for my situation of not understanding what actually happened. If if many of the people who worked on that are still alive, they should be regaled as heroes in animation and they probably are they probably are so uh because i didn't stay in class for a whole lot um this saturday i i only have a few things written down um but i'll get through those and then i'll get through just my overall thoughts on the class just to wrap it up so prior to this class, I did know that Walt Disney had done the first wildlife documentary. I'd heard that somewhere sometime in my past. But when I watched the seal one that we, we, we viewed in class, I, I realized how that spurred so many other types of films. And not just wildlife documentaries, because that, that started happening. But a lot of the shows, I don't know, now that I think about it, there were a lot of Disney shows. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of the shows were, um, specifically about it, these animals and they would take stories out of absolutely nothing. It's just animals there and they, they make this little story about it. Um, I don't know. I just thought it was really clever as a kid and I got to the age where I knew that they were just making up a story, but it was still really... It was still really fun to watch, you know? And then, and then March of the Penguins came out and I thought it was going to be the same kind of thing and it wasn't. It was, it was far more realistic. And I don't know, I think we've taken a turn from the making a story out of nothing kind of thing. But I don't know, I still like it. I still think it was entertaining. So my overall thoughts about the class and about Walt Disney is, I think what I've already written in the, um, in the final test, um, but I don't know, it's worth repeating. I didn't realize I was so similar to Walt. I didn't realize how much we had in common. And it, it, it's just interesting because I keep thinking, you know, I'm not that special. You can't say, oh, I'm just like this famous person, fill in the blank, whatever. You can't think that you'll get the same success that they did just because you're similar to them. That's not how it works. But I think in a way, there are some good things you can take from it in the realm of encouragement, right? You can say, okay, maybe not risk everything. Maybe once or twice, but don't risk everything all the time. 
and think, oh, this is going to be my, my break. I'm going to get it this time. But definitely find something that you enjoy, that you're passionate about. And when you really, really enjoy it and you really love doing it, everything else will fall into place. You don't really need to worry about make or break it with a job that you hate or that you're not enjoying or that you think, why am I here in this? Why am I doing applied sciences? Why am I teaching math? Why am I, I don't know, all the things I, I can imagine that I wouldn't enjoy. Why would I be doing that? If it made me money, okay, whatever. But then if I fail or if I don't reach a certain bar of success that I wanted to get to, all of that struggle was for nothing. But if I do something that I enjoy and I'm working towards something, even if I don't get there, I still enjoyed that journey. And I think that's what I got out of this is that Walt, even if he hadn't succeeded, still would have really liked what he did. And he always chased the new best thing. So you, you know that he was always looking for something new and something bold that he hadn't seen before. And that was his passion. That was awesome. And even if people didn't like it or if they said, no, this is a dumb waste of my time. I'm not going to do this anymore. He still would have chased that. And he still would have enjoyed every single minute of it. Because that's what he is. He's a man of passion. He was a man of doing what he wanted because he liked it. And so if there's one thing I can take away from this, it's that no matter what I do, I need to make sure that I really enjoy it. And right now I really enjoy what I'm doing. So it was a, a definite confirmation that what I'm doing is the right thing. That it probably won't get me a whole lot of money and I probably won't be able to live in a mansion, but that's fine. If I meet failure, which I probably will, no matter which path I take, I might as well pick the one that's going to bring me the most joy. Might as well. <laughs>